I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. Hey, this is Charles Onyet, here to review Bioshock, Irrational's first-person shooter for PC and Xbox 360, although now they're called 2K Boston and Australia. But uh, regardless of what their name is, they've made an incredible game here. The story follows Andrew Ryan, uh, someone who withdrew from the world and basically created the city of Rapture underwater and brought with him all the scientists and artists and creative people he could find so that they were free to follow whatever you know professional interests they had. Ken Levine said the game was based largely on Atlas Shrugged, which was Ayn Rand's last novel, and uh, such influence shows pretty strongly in the game's characters. And uh, But I think there's also some parallels to be made with Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Uh, Andrew Ryan is a lot like Rodion Raskolnikov's idea of an exceptional person, uh, believing that without fail there are those in the world destined to be incredible, and isn't worried about crushing others along the way, if it's for the greater good, basically ends justify the means. The fact that you can even make these kind of allusions to literature and not just, you know, pop fiction like something like uh, Da Vinci Code. How a proper breadth of reading preparation can actually allow you to more fully appreciate the game experience is a huge asset in Bioshock, something that hardly any developer or publisher wants to take a chance on. And though Andrew Ryan had such a strong vision of creating Rapture, um, it's clear pretty much from like the first five minutes of the game that he completely failed in pulling it off, which you'll recognize within about five seconds of starting the game. So you play a, a nameless hero, you crash in a plane at the beginning and have to take refuge in Rapture or face certain death in the water because it's really the only structure there to save you. The action immediately grabs you by the nostrils and never really lets go. This game's sense of atmosphere, of immersion, of creeping terror juxtaposed with snippets of humor and really creates a dynamic, unnervingly believable and cohesive game world for me. You really get the sense that this place could actually exist, as well as its inhabitants. So like in System Shock 2, story sequences take place with characters giving voiceovers while you're still playing, so they let the action continue while the story unfolds. No character in the game is flat, they're all expertly voiced, have multiple dimensions to them, and to the point where you find yourself even sympathizing with people you know or at least perceive to be villains. You just don't see this kind of character development in games today. Publishers and developers are far too willing to bypass story altogether, and Bioshock is a towering example of how engaging narrative and round characters can dramatically improve a game's quality. The game itself plays like a first-person shooter, yet with tons of different options for combat, so the gameplay here is just as interesting as the story. Since you get weapons, uh, lots of weapons, with three different types of ammunition each, each of which you can upgrade in different ways. Then there are all the plasmid abilities, which are little uh, genetic modifications to your character that let you do things like shoot lightning, set enemies on fire, set environment things on fire, uh, shock people in pools of water, send them flying into the ceiling. Uh, you can hack machines and get them to fight for you. And there, I mean, there's just a ton of different options. I don't want to spoil too many of them. But really, the combat in this game is so varied, just with all these plasmids and tonics, uh, which can modify your character, like giving you health when you hack a machine, and all the weapons, that it, it's really your own creativity uh, that determines how much you're able to get out of the combat system. And I know that may sound like a bullet point on a fact sheet, but in this game it's actually true. And there's even more than that, too. There's an RPG-like level-up system tied to a camera. Um, there's a somewhat limited ability to craft your own ammo for weapons and an involved and perhaps too frequently occurring uh, hacking system for taking control of machines. But really, when it boils down to it, all these like options for combat really hinges on the enemy AI, because if you're fighting against morons, then none of this would be very fun. Fortunately, it works really well in this game. Enemies respond to your behavior-modifying plasmids, have interesting attack patterns, and are generally pretty challenging, assuming you've set the difficulty to hard. Big Daddy fights, which you'll have to engage in frequently throughout the game to upgrade your character, are some of the most intense battles we've ever encountered. These guys are extremely powerful foes, they can knock you out with only a few hits, and uh, they're the perfect target to sort of use all the different weapon and plasmid combinations that you have available. 
And really the best part about Bioshock is how well all its parts fit together. The way the narrative and gameplay mesh with the wonderfully realized world of Rapture and the stellar sound design. I mean, the sound here is incredible. And the game's phenomenal sense of pace. You're never without something to do. And it's not a short game either. Like, if you play at the hardest difficulty, um, assuming you're not just rushing through, it should probably take around 20 hours to beat. So even with such a lengthy uh, single-player campaign, I still left my first playthrough and wanted to immediately play it again. So I think that's a pretty good sign as to how, how good this game actually is, because there's so many things to do during the gameplay that even once you know the whole storyline, you still want to go through and just check out what other things you can do with all the plasmids and weapons. So basically what I'm trying to say with all this blabbing is just go buy the game. You will enjoy yourself.